when do you expect When do you expect to have a UAS demonstrator flying? It's been quite a while since you uh, first put the manned diesel version out into the public domain, uh, but it's been quite a while since you actually initiated the UAS version of that. That's uh, a very good point. We've been, um, we actually took a backward step approximately 18 months ago and, and looked at our position. We'd spent a lot of time in um, uh, looking at implementing, believe it or not, an electric engine for this helicopter. We'd looked at uh, re-implementing new rotor blades what we've done is gone back and rewritten our business plan from scratch. We've decided that we need to look at the industry as a whole. We have still the manned aircraft on our drawing board. We have still the UAS on our drawing board, and we don't yet know which one's going to roll out as our final production. Like most industries here, we are hamstrung by dollars. We're on a rolling two-year plan at the moment. We have projects in place in our, in our SolidWorks um, project that will look at the optimization of the aerodynamics of the UAS in particular, but also the optimization of the manned aircraft. You saw with the dual rotor head there, there is a certain height difference between the two coaxial um, rotor discs. We want to look at optimizing that before we push it out. We also want to look at running the diesel power plant before we push it out. We've got to be cost effective when we go, and we've got to be efficient when we go. Until we've satisfied all of those questions, I can't give you a hard answer. My approximate time frame, depending on finances, is about two years. Uh, Peter, Rob Crow from Australian Army. Uh, two part question. The first one is to do with the reliability of how are you going to prove the reliability of this aircraft? And the second one is what's the target you're aiming for? Reliability can only be proven statistically. We hope with the use of the um, Astro, the, I keep getting the emphasis incorrect there, the Ostro engine, they are already operating in fixed wing aircraft. They have several thousand hours of time uh, that they have proven the reliability. Currently, as I said, mean time between overhaul of 1200 hours and their hope is to extend that out to 2000 hours. We hope that, that will tie up the power plant to a large degree. The transmission and rotor head, if you look at the examples of the um, gyrodyne system, some 2,000 missions per aircraft, we believe the reliability in this type of technology will be quite strong. Part of our research application in our SOLIDWORKS program is to look at how we can optimise the composite materials that we wish to use, the new alloys that have come available in the last few years to try to implement that. But at the end of the, of the day, we can only do that through user trials and statistically verifying after operation and breakdown, NDI checks and other um, manufacturing processes to see that we do have that reliability. In terms of your second question, the target market was a turned on and turned off. If we were to go targeting a military application and Afghanistan is turned off, Iran's turned on, Iran's turned off, we have no continuity. We believe that the food bowl is our bread and butter. If we can target agricultural opportunities, then that's where we want to have our baseline. If there are specific military targets, and as I alluded to before with the application of search and rescue with the Christmas Islands disaster, that is a purpose-built opportunity that we think would be absolutely um, directly applicable to our COEX platform. If those military op op opportunities appear, then we'll be out there, like everyone else, making our system available. Sorry, the second part of the question was, what's the reliability target? Oh, target, 2,000 hours mean time between overhaul is what we would like to see for the entire aircraft. That will be um, certainly available for the power plant, but we've yet to validate it for the um, rotor head and the transmissions. The, the blades themselves will be far less than that. I'm not going to put that qualification on the blades, but uh, we'll see about the, uh, the transmissions. Bill. Peter, you spoke about um, aerial application, aerial agriculture. Yes. Can you uh, let us know a little bit what you see the challenges of that capability are and, and what steps you've taken to, uh, to get prepared for that capability, please? The challenges are enormous. Firstly, we've got to overcome the public perception. Secondly, we've got to overcome the cost effectiveness. Right now, aerial agriculture by fixed wing in particular is the most dominant. However, there are specific uh, task oriented rotary wing applications that, although highly dangerous, are still cost effective. 
We have to produce a case, our risk assessment has to be such that we can minimise, if not eliminate, the possible deaths incurred by doing that activity, and I think that's fairly easy to achieve. Our autopilot system being as accurate as it is will allow us to very clearly um, plot exactly where the aircraft can fly and can be compared to the uh, general application of a manned aircraft. We also then have to overcome the industry resistance and we haven't really stepped into that as well at the moment. The best way I see for us to move forward to that end is to approach the agricultural um, companies and whether that be right at the top end from companies such as John Deere who are providing automated systems with all of their land management processes or whether that's directly toward the aerial agricultural companies that will be the final implementers. It may not be a short term thing but I think long term we're going to see a real swing away from using manned systems to unmanned, especially in countries like China where they have vast areas that need to be managed and small resources in terms of the techno technological skills required by the people actually operating them. If we can show that we can do that job effectively without using a dedicated uh, skill set of a manned operator, then I think that challenge will be fairly quickly overcome. Thank you for your attention.